So let's continue with our SharePoint quick questions and answers video session and let's go to question number 13. How do we debug SharePoint errors? Now, uh, basically, whenever there is an error on a SharePoint page, what happens is SharePoint basically displays the error message on the browser. Now, the error message or the error description displayed on the browser is very much minimal. It's very difficult to figure out what basically the error was, where is the source, which line number, or at least what in which method or function did the error occur. For instance, take up this sample, which is basically a feature. And in this feature, in the feature deactivating event, what I've done is I've given a wrong site name called as learn SharePoint wrong address. There is no site which is at this moment in my server which exists with the name learn SharePoint wrong, wrong address. Basically, the address is learn SharePoint. Right. So what will happen is whenever whenever I try to deactivate this feature, it will throw an error. Now let's see what happens when I try to deactivate this feature. So here's my feature and I'll try to deactivate it. And you will see that the error thrown is file not found. Now the first thing is it uh, the error what it displays, the information is very less. It doesn't show me in which method the issue is. Second, it has also overridden by its own custom message file not found. The issue over here is the URL error and not file not found. So in other words, the information which is displayed by SharePoint on the browser is very much minimal in order uh, in order for a developer to go and debug and see where the error source is. So what we'll do is now, we'll try to uh, see that how we can uh, direct SharePoint to display a more informative message uh, for the error which is displayed at this moment. Now, in order to display a more detailed message on the browser, we need to do the following changes in the web.config file of the SharePoint virtual directory. The first change we need to do is in the config file is change the call stack value from false to true. Now, to get the virtual file directory name, you can go to your IIS, right click on a SharePoint virtual directory. You can see that at this moment, my virtual directory is in WSS virtual directories 80. So, WSS virtual directory 80. I can see the config file. I have opened the config file. And let me first search for this property, safe mode. So, that's my safe mode. And let us change that value to true. So, that's the first thing. The second thing, in the config file, you need to make your custom errors off, right? So that it doesn't override uh, with, o with the own SharePoint custom errors and it doesn't give you a misleading information, right? So let's make the custom errors, let's find the custom error attribute and let's make it off so that it's not overridden by SharePoint error, error handling mechanism. The third thing which you need to change is change your compilation batch attribute to true. So let's find compilation and let's make it true. And finally, we need to do our IS reset. So let me run and do the IS reset. Right. So in other words, we have done four types of changes. First, we have changed the call stack value from false to true. Second, we have changed the custom errors mode to off and then we have uh, changed the compilation batch attribute to true, right? Now let's go to our site and let's open the page, the features page and let me deactivate the feature. Now when I try to deactivate the feature, it will exactly tell me that which method has this, which method has the problem and with that we can figure out that where exactly the error occurs. Now, whenever you go in a production environment, you keep the default config uh, config file setting given by SharePoint because you don't want that the end user uh, should get a detailed information about your method names uh, because this is very essential from the security aspect point of view, right? So definitely when you are going in a production environment, it should be exactly what it was first. That means your call stack value should be false, your custom mode error should be on, and your compilation batch should be false. 
Why? Because for security reasons, you don't want to display your connection string failures or you don't want to display uh, your uh, custom errors or you can say your detail errors to the end user, uh, which uh, uh, your details error to the end user, you know, which end user can use it to basically exploit your system. But yes, when you want to debug the environment, you would like to make these changes, see the errors, fix it up and then again change back the web.config file values. So let me now go and deactivate it. And now when I go and deactivate the feature, it basically shows me exactly where the error is. So at this moment, it is telling me that your feature deactivating event is having the error and which is exactly what right here has pointed out. Why? Because over here, my URL address is wrong. So in order to get a detail message, you need to do, do all these four changes to get a detail error. But the very important point is why SharePoint has kept the debug to off is for security measures so that an exploiter doesn't see a detail message and tries to understand how your system is architected and tries to exploit it for his own uh, personal benefits. So if you are in a production environment, you need to keep your uh, config file as the default settings given by SharePoint. But when there is an error, what you can do is basically you can just enable it, see your defect, fix it up, and then again, uh, make the config file settings uh, defaulted to whatever SharePoint had given previously. I hope that this session was useful and see you in the coming up questionnaire.